I'm actually exhausted, and uh, it's not because of the one mosquito I had inside last night, and that is a restless night. Can you imagine you live on six square meters and then there's one mosquito and it just uh, disturbs your whole night rest? You know, it's buzzing around you the minute that you uh, put your head on the pillow and then you think, okay, get up, switch on the light, try and find the mosquito and kill it. <laughs> so you do, you can't find it. And then you go back to bed and the minute, well, two minutes later, bzz, back at your ear and it's like, oh God. So that was going on all night. It is my life. <laughs> but when I say I'm exhausted, I mean exhausted in a different kind of way. And that's because I've really been doing quite a lot and I haven't done anything at the same time. And that's the weird thing. And that's why I feel a bit weird. And I thought I'd, uh, I'd tell you about that today. Uh, just some uh, van life reality check. As you know, my uh, alternator broke down and it was a whole story. And, you know, if you're new to my channel, by the way, hi, I am Jack and this is my van, Dean. And we've had some uh, alternator issues, let's call it that. There's a whole story that I can link uh, up uh, here somewhere and uh, feel free to go and check it out. Now, um, I was supposed to be traveling throughout uh, Spain doing the van life discovery and in the end I kind of got stuck, but I fell in love with Valencia. So there, there wasn't really a big issue, but I have been dealing with a lot of stress with the alternator and now I'm living in a constant fear, I think, of actually driving because the way they fixed it it's not really fixed, so I'm kind of on edge all the time. I know I need to drive, I need to move on, I need to do something. I either go back home or still, you know, go back home means going back to the cold and dark weather because it's not great yet over there. Or I travel around Spain a bit more and then I have these issues. Uh, will the alternator completely break down or can I just do my thing and nothing happens so that that's all going on in my head um which kind of it's strange to express it but it kind of immobilizes me like should i go should i not go should i go and in the end my brain explodes and i am still here in valencia but the idea is to actually start moving somewhere sunny somewhere back direction back home i'm not quite sure on top of the engine alternator stress, I am also giving myself a lot of stress with the YouTube channel. I, I love doing that, don't get me wrong, um, but it is new to me as well. This is a road to discovery on how to film yourself, how to even feel comfortable just, you know, putting the camera there while people are around you and then filming yourself. That takes a lot of energy as well. It's just to do it and, you know, don't give a fuck basically about what other people say again my brain overactive it'll think about you know like oh, you know what will people say and, and all that and that's just the filming but then there's also the editing which you know if i put something on youtube as strange as that might sound now but i those little clips or those little videos are my little babies that i put out in the world and i want my little babies to look nice so i spend a lot of time editing again a whole learning curve about editing programs sounds uh, music copyright you know all that on youtube and on top of that still on the topic of youtube you then have to learn about you know the algorithm uh, you know who's watching you when are they watching you when you should you post uh, what does your thumbnail look supposed to look like what is clickbait because let's be honest you only click you as a viewer you only click if you think it's interesting and the weird thing is and i wonder if this is now gonna boost this uh, video at all because it sounds a bit negative and everything is going horribly wrong in my life whether that is the kind of um video that people are attracted to like oh hello look it's not perfect oh i want to see that oh is there like there's a problem there's an issue what's the solution that kind of thing and sometimes you know 
the sun gets up and the sun goes down and it's just life and things happen or things don't happen. So I'm still in the learning curve there as well. The third thing that is stressing me out a bit as well is I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm loving all this. I really do. Every morning when I have my coffee, I think like, wow, you know, this is great. I'm blessed. I'm grateful. You know, on the other hand, um, I'm homesick as well. I have to admit that. I mean, you know, I didn't think that much, you know, but you had, you know, I've had a routine for like most of my life with family, friends, work, you know, and now all of a sudden I'm away from this and all of a sudden you start missing things, even food, you know, I'm in Spain, lovely food, you know, but it's not my kind of food. I was brought up on totally different things and I miss those things. So that's something I miss people, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm referring to things first. No, no, no. I miss people as well. You know, I have family and friends. I miss two important birthdays, for instance. Um, I have a dear friend that needs, I think, my help, but now I'm here and I feel a bit, um, well, helpless, basically. So, so that's an add-on an add stress that um, I wasn't anticipating when I left. <sighs> I even miss my espresso machine. I mean, there's this lovely coffee every morning. I, I, I'm enjoying it. And every time I go into town, I'll try and find a coffee roasters and, and get like really decent coffee. But at home, I have an industrial espresso machine, a, bro a double broiler. And, you know, that is, it's an event making a coffee with that machine. Again, I miss that. It is that question of what is important in life and what isn't. Again, stress in the brain, and I want to chill. That, that is what all this um, travel, all, this, all these life-changing decisions that I made was all about. It is about a stress-free life. And my brain apparently disagrees. It's looking, for, it's looking for trouble, and it's finding it. Now, if you've... Um, if you've been following my channel, uh, so you know that I've whisked my way all the way from Berlin down Belgium, Luxembourg, France, and now got stuck in Valencia on the east coast of Spain. And today is the day that I have decided to at least, even if it's only driving half an hour, but I feel I need to drive somewhere. Just a change of scenery. And also maybe a little test drive with the alternator, the blinking lights on my dashboard, how that is coping. So that's why I'm kind of sitting here now, dumping my, my thoughts on you. I'm grateful that you're here and I'm grateful that you're listening to me and I hope you haven't clicked away yet. But um, that's why I'm here telling myself and telling you, I am actually you know, packing up in Valencia and I am moving and I will check in with you once I'm in a different location and I can sort of up update you on what my decision is because at this very moment the brain is still all over the place. Am I going towards France, direction home or am I still going a bit more south where the sun is still shining and it is still very pleasant. The jury is still out there. My coffee is still not uh, finished, so I still have a couple of minutes. But when you see me next, trust me, I'll be in a different location. And also, I mean, as lovely as my, my van neighbor here has parked himself, I, I kind of want a view again, and this is not a view. So, promise I'll be back in a different location. See you in a bit. Good morning. Well, well, actually, before I have my coffee, uh, answer me this question. Do you think I stayed or do you think I actually left? Answers on a postcard or after my first coffee?
Well, good morning and good morning from a different place, a place that is not Valencia. Can you believe it? My brain uh, hardly can believe it now, but I actually drove about 300 kilometers. 300 kilometers, probably less, but it just felt like 300 kilometers. Anyway, I have moved well, I said I was maybe going to move uh, homewards, but to be quite honest, I moved uh, southwards uh, because I wasn't really sure where I was heading, whether I was heading north already going home or whether I wanted to try a bit more sun uh, in in Spain. So I decided to move uh, 200 kilometers southwards. I am now in the lovely city of um I was going to say Valencia again. No, 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 no. I've been saying Valencia for the last three months now. It's Alicante. I am in Alicante, which is uh, also, you know, at the Mediterranean. It's got a nice city center. It's got a couple of churches. It's got a castle on a on a mountain. So everything that you basically expect from a Spanish town. Um, as you might see, the park up. A, I called it reality check, van life reality check. Well, as you can see, the park up is uh, not as glamorous as all those Instagram pictures that you see. I did try a couple of uh, beach um, park ups, but one was completely empty. And then when I looked on the app Park for Night, I saw a couple of people, you know, complaining about break-ins. So I thought like, well, I'm not going to leave my van alone here. I'm not going to leave little Dean alone there and then the other one which was a lovely place also on the beach side that was fully cramped and you know then you just stand next to each other and oh yes you have your Instagram moment but apart from that you basically hear your neighbors talk you hear their dogs bark you hear the toilet flush I don't know that wasn't really my idea of fun either so I ended up on this parking lot which is actually just within walking distance to the city center it's huge as you can see it's bare it's uh, it's got gravel on the f on the ground um, it's not glamorous but it does the trick and I had a really really good night's sleep here um, so you know the town is now waking up workers builders are starting to park up their vans and um, hey this will do for today at least i am on the move and that's what i wanted to obtain i wanted to give my brain that little you know ignition that you know yes it is okay to drive again yes it is okay to you know move around and explore and discover and um talking about the drive the drive itself well Dean is performing okay, that's all I can say. Yes, the battery light is on, on the dashboard, and it wasn't on for the first three minutes. So I was really, the first three minutes I was driving, I thought like, hey, they fixed it, it's gone, there's nothing happening. And then after the third minute or something like that, bang, the light went on. And the light hasn't been off since, so there you go. So, but the Spanish mechanic had warned me that this would happen. He tweaked something. I have no idea what he did, but he tweaked it so that the alternator is functioning and the red light is also functioning. But I should be ignoring that. Remember that one. So, I also bought another device. I've got two devices now that I plug into the cigarette lighter. One that only has colors like the red, amber and green. And I bought a new one that has the um, actual voltage. I think it's voltage, isn't it? Uh, on the display. So there you go. So as you can see, it is around the 13.4, the 13.5. So I am assuming, and I am not a mechanic, and I know nothing about cars as we've now established, but I am assuming that the 13.4 or the 13.5 that is on this display is actually the voltage, the, the power that my new alternator is giving to my board battery. Now, another assumption, but God knows. But the other assumption is that if it is giving 13.4, 13.5, then isn't that enough to also feed the leisure battery? That's what I would assume. So 
No way of testing now because I don't have a battery meter. I only have an MPPT uh, regulator or whatever it's called. It's a little device that will, you know, that continuously uh, regulates my solar input. And since, I have to admit as well, since I've been driving and standing here in Alicante where there's full sun from morning in the 8th, as you can see, till late at night, 7 o'clock-ish, um, my solar is, you know, soaking up all that sun, so I've got a lot of solar energy. Downside? I don't know if it's a downside, but the only problem is, of course, I don't need the diesel heater now, and that is the whole setup problem that I have. When I've got sun, I don't need the diesel heater. When I don't have sun, I need the diesel heater, but then I lack the electricity. Hopefully, now, we're just driving around as well, and, you know, maybe feeding that ba leisure battery just a little bit, um, I should be fine once I finally go towards France, Luxembourg, Belgium and Germany, where it is still cold. So that's the last update. Now, as lovely as Alicante is, I had, now I had a walk around, didn't bring my camera, but, you know, it's, it's lovely. Let's put it that way. But I'm now on the move and I feel like I should be moving on again, maybe try another location. And I think it is now time to move north um, because we're mid March now and I maybe I would like to be home if you call it home still but home around April time and see some friends some family see the mechanic the Ford garage so I'm planning on driving around 300 kilometers a day and have a stop and overnight and then on to the next destination 300 kilometers away. So if I do it like that, I should be home in about two weeks time. Home, I mean friends, family and a Ford garage, of course. So um, I will report back to you what the next station is. That probably will be still in this video, so look out for it. Well, not look out for it. It'll be here in two minutes when I go snap. Um, okay, maybe I'll just do that. I go snap and see where we end up. Well, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you watch it to the end and uh, enjoy the sunset with me. I hope I wasn't too heavy and I haven't talked too much. Um, some people have said, actually, I have a soothing voice and they've all asleep listening to me. Not sure if I should take that as a compliment or not. But hey, I'm always grateful that you were here with me and uh, that you joined me on my travels because as a solo traveler, sometimes that is a lonely existence. And knowing that there are some people out there who, you know, are with me along the way um, gives me comfort. So enjoy this uh, sunset with me and I'll see you next week. Who knows what will, who knows what life will throw at me. Thank you.